say again, welcome you to Interfaith Spiritual Center. I am Mike, Reverend, Reverend Michael Berger. And I would like to say hello to our viewing audience and everyone out there. And hi, Mom. <laughs> You're going to see this sooner or later, so I want to say hi, Mom. Who'd have thought, right? So um, uh, I was kind of a little, a little nervous about speaking today when Dr. Sharon asked me because the last time I spoke, it was in uh, my church back in Omaha several years ago. Little nice little talk on forgiveness. I thought it was, you know, just a nice little talk. I've heard wonderful talks from speakers since then, you know, but I thought I did an okay job. So uh, a few months later, I was at a holiday party, and this gentleman came up to me and said, "Well, I guess you noticed I haven't been in church lately." And I, well, I hadn't noticed, and we had a big congregation, and I was an ordained deacon. I had certain people I kind of looked after. I, he wasn't one of them, and. And so, uh, and I really didn't know him that well, so I just said, oh, really? He goes, yeah, it's all your fault. And I was, I was shocked. He goes, you spoke on forgiveness. He said, well, it, if I forgive them, well, that means they won. And he turned around and walked off. You know, well, you know, I was shocked. I was horrified. I didn't know what to say. And I thought, well, you know, he just didn't listen to what I was saying. He didn't hear what I was saying. And, but that kind of it bugged me all these years, you know, that of all the people <laughs> in church, that one guy never came back. So, my talk today on power of love, listen, because if anybody comes up to me and says, if I love that person, that means they win. I'm never coming back to entertain. You're going to get a little slapping around, so I'm not above that. So anyway, the power of love. I thought I would start off by reading um, from the Science of Mind book, but um, Ernest Holmes the founder of uh, religious science, uh, wrote about uh, love. And it's, uh, he references uh, the scripture in the Bible, John 13, verses 34 and 35, which are, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. That's what Jesus is telling uh, all the people that he's speaking to. So Dr. Holmes says, love is the central flame of the universe, nay, the very fire itself. It is written that God is love, and that we are his express likeness, the image of the eternal beings. Love is self-givingness through creation, the impartation of the divine through the human. Love is an essence, an atmosphere, which defies analysis, as does life itself. It is that which is and cannot be explained. It is common to all people, to all animal life, and evident in the response of plants to those who love them. Love reigns supreme over all. The essence of love, while elusive, pervades everything, fires the heart, stimulates the emotions, renews the soul, and proclaims the spirit. Only love knows love, and love knows only love. Words cannot express its depth or meaning. A universal sense alone bears witness to the divine fact God is love, and love is God. And so, you know, I thought, oh, well, that's all I need to say. You know, that pretty much explains it right there. But then you kind of wonder, well, how do you put it into practical, practical uh, purpose in your life? And how, 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 do, you, how do you use it? Um, we do a little guided, uh, Ernest Holmes has a guided uh, daily thing. And on, October, on August 24th, he says, the law of God is love. You are made perfect in the law when you enter into conscious communion with love. It is only through love that the law can fulfill itself in your experience because love harmonizes everything and unifies everything. This love is more than sentiment. It is a deep sense of underlying unity, beauty, and majesty of all life, the goodness running through everything, the givingness of life to everything. So... We are told by Jesus as well, when asked what is the greatest commandment, he said, love God with all your strength, mind, body, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. And we all know we're all in the, made in the image and likeness of God spiritually, not physically, or all, we'd all be looking alike, but spiritually, we were all made the same. We all have that inner guidance system, that inner being that I call, I call it my heart center. It's that secret place of the Most High. That's where the God Spirit resides. And we all have that love 
universal love principle and we can use it. And um, so to love your neighbor as yourself presupposes that we love ourselves. And if we love God, which is our spiritual center inside, then we love ourselves. We're to do that. I think of um, our neighbors as not only the people that you sit beside or have you know, a house next door, but they're the nations, the next door nation, the nations all over the world. It could even be the next planet over if there are people there, you know. Universal love principle. Um, there's a saying that I like, because we do our meditation, we talk, think about world peace. We meditate on world peace. And I think, well, we have to start somewhere. Okay, let's start with ourselves. Let's ignite the love principle that we have in our heart. For when we have love in our heart, we have harmony in our homes. And we have harmony in our homes, we have order in the nation. And when we have order in the nation, we have peace on earth. It's simple, right? It's simple. That's a nice, simple little formula. Uh, the, the difficult part is, okay, practicing it, <laughs> right? Practice makes perfect. Uh, I think of a story about a woman who uh, was at her therapist and she was complaining about her work environment. Oh, everybody is so cold, It's the energy is so dead, and nobody talks to her, and she just feels like she's not wanted there, and so the therapist is listening on that, so he, he's finally, towards the end of the session, he gives her a homework assignment. Every morning, I want you, when you're getting ready to work, to look in the mirror, I want you to tell yourself that you love yourself. Say, I love you, and look in the mirror. Give yourself a hug. Say, I appreciate you. You are a good person, and you do good work. Do that every morning, and then go to work. And in two weeks, when she came back for her uh, session, and she's walking in, and the doctor could see a big difference in just her energy, the way she walked, carried herself, the way she spoke. And she said, you know, it's funny that people at work are starting to change. <laughs> you know, it's just, they, they, they invited me to lunch one day, everybody stops by and says hello. And uh, she was just amazed, but she didn't realize that she was doing the work herself inside. She changed her uh, outlook. Uh, she changed how she was feeling toward the other people, and well, toward herself. She started loving herself, and that is like the pebble in the pond. Sends out the waves, and other people feel that and get that energy. So we are a mirror. We are a mirror. We stay in our what we believe. We get back. We give out. We get back what we give out. And that is certainly true. And when you're giving out anything besides love, guess what you're getting back? So if somebody's giving you back something, <laughs> you better stop and check and see what you're giving to them. Now that's not to say that there are people moving through some issues. And our job at that point is to open up that heart center and realize, well, I don't care what they're going through, it could be temporary, I don't know, maybe they've been going through it for years, but I know the essence of that person, and they, I know that they have the love principle in their heart center, just as I do. I'm gonna recognize that in them. I had a neighbor when I first moved here to Palm Springs, and uh, very, you didn't know, you know, how to, what he's gonna be like one day to the next, happy, sad, or mad, or whatever. Well, he got a little burn in his knicker one day, and for some reason, and oh my gosh, everybody's life on the block was, you know, turned upside down. And I knew he had issues. I knew some of the things, some of his issues, and uh, I thought, well, there could probably be more than, than what I knew about. So I had been coming here to Interfaith for a couple of years by that time, and uh, Dr. Sharon uh, was always saying, he drew a circle that shut me out, but Love and I had the wit to win. I drew a circle that took him in. So this is before I even started taking uh, Science of Mind classes. And so I thought, oh, uh, you know, I'm going to try that. So I would just envision him as a friend. I just thought of him as a nice friend, the kind of friend I would like to have. You know, my, my perfect friend. And still didn't talk to him, you know, still didn't uh, associate with him. With something coming and going, you know, just kind of keep my distance. But because of my perception of him, 
he started, mellow. people in the neighborhood kind of started making comments about, well, you know, he's settled down now. And uh, well, then I moved away, so I don't know what happened after that. But it really it helped me overcome the physical and, and the, the surface uh, part of him that he was showing, his mental. And uh, so during my um, research on this, I came across uh, uh, the Buddhist uh, kind of uh, talk on love. And they have a, on a conditional, on two planes, conditional and unconditional. And as you know, uh, many of us here, we go to Wednesday Night Live, we hear a lot of speakers, and, and some of them talk about the feminine energy rising up now in the, for the new era, the new age, to balance out the masculine energy that has been predominant for so many, a uh, couple thousand years now. And um, that this love principle is the, a female energy, it's an emotion, it's one that, you know, men, me as a little boy, and my era we're taught to suppress you know you don't show emotions you, know, you just you know be tough and rough and so uh, this unconditional love is uh, something that I feel now and I see it a lot more now of it coming out of it showing up especially in little kids little boys and girls how they're happy and they 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 go out and they meet people. We used to have uh, Donna Brown used to bring her daughter and she would do little dances up and down the aisle, you know, and she would uh, just be out there helping little men and women into the grocery store when she'd go shopping with Donna. And then we had our lovely little Dara who was just so grown up, such an evolved soul and was such a pleasure to be around them. And just to see these little children love no matter what. So, I uh, reminded of, a, of uh, about showing love a, a couple of stories, and they're very similar. You know, a couple of women, one in a motel, one in her car, but men all of a sudden jumping into her car or busting into the motel room for, to rob them. And um, whatever led these women to do what they did, instead of screaming and giving up and giving all their stuff, they just start talking to these guys. Tell him, you don't want to do this. Why are you doing this? You know, and the lady in the car was saying, I read this on AOL. Uh, started talking to the guy about, Jesus loves you. And uh, why are you want to do this? And now I love you and I'm on. Well, come to find out both of these men were in a spot. They didn't have jobs. They needed to feed their families. And this is the only way they could figure out how to do it. And so you don't know what somebody's going through. And when just... When you show your love for anybody, and you don't have to become friends, you don't, you don't have to fall in love, just smile. Show a genuine smile from the heart center, showing other people that someone does care, that you are loved, that they are loved. And on Wednesday nights, I like that we tone our bowls and we make a journey between our heart, the 18 inches between our heart and our head. And I like that because this is balancing out our mental and our uh, emotional feelings, our feminine and our masculine energies, so that we become more balanced people. We do need to use our head, but we need to let be led from our heart. Uh, so I would like to read an affirmation for you. It's from the same book, the same day on August 24th, that Ernest Holmes wrote, and I want you to carry this with you. It sounds a little Pollyanna. When I read it, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to hear, oh, it's all Pollyanna. And I want to say, what's wrong with that? I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, so today, I bestow the essence of love upon everything. Everybody shall be lovely to me. My soul meets the soul of the universe in everyone. Everything is beautiful, everything is meaningful. This love is a healing power, touching everything into wholeness and healing the wounds of experience with its divine balm. I know that this love essence is the very substance of life, the creative principle back of everything, flowing through my whole being 
spiritual, mental, and physical. It flows in transcendent loveliness into my world of thought and form, ever renewing, vitalizing, bringing joy, harmony, and blessings to everything and everyone it touches. So with that, I would like to just say thank you for letting me impart some of my information that I've learned uh, to you about love. And I hope that I have maybe planted a seed or something, but uh, uh, think about some, you know, somebody that could really use a virtual hug and give it to them from your heart. Thank you.